What's up guys, Dave here, One Bite, One Dream. Today we're talking to you guys about gaining confidence, throwing bigger soft baits. We're gonna talk to you about when to throw them, where to throw them, what you should be looking for in a bait. And we'll break it down for you here by seasons. To start off, we'll talk about the spring. So the spring, pre-spawn, cold water temps. Fish are gonna be looking to feed up before the spawn. So for that reason, I'm gonna suggest to you guys to upsize your baits. Um, throw your bigger baits this time of year. These fish are lethargic, looking for that one big meal. And so throw the biggest baits you got. Um, as far as what type of baits should you be throwing this time of year? Wedge tail baits, exclusively. One example here, eight inch Huddleston. Another one here is a 10 inch Real Prey. Now these are great baits. They get bit real well and they get bit by big fish. But these baits, they require a, a dedicated setup and you may not have the confidence. You may not want to go out and buy a new setup and you just kind of want to see what this stuff's all about. We got you covered. One great place to start would be a bait like this. Here's a little Real Prey 5 inch. This one's painted in perch. You can get it any color you want. Great little wedge tail bait. Another popular alternative here. This is a 68 Huddleston. Uh, you can get Huddleston's there's the 68 and get the six inch as well and they make them down to this little one here there's a little weedless shad um i'd have to recommend to you guys the 68 because that having that eight inch tail it really makes all the difference as far as pushing water it kicks so much more than the six inch and it's just going to pull bass in from further it's not too much heavier and you just you just can't go wrong with that 68. the beauty in um in those rods or those baits rather is that you can get away with throwing them on a jig rod just any rod that you probably already got as long as it's got some good backbone you can throw those baits and they're still going to get you some big bites so as far as what bait should i choose that's going to depend where you are in the country it's going to also depend on the type of waters that you're fishing so you might be fishing a little pond little golf course pond or whatever Good place to start would be something like this, a little 4.75 Real Prey gill. A lot of ponds, every pond's got gills in them. Your pond might have crappies in them. That's a great place to start as well. Uh, those are both great options that you could throw on a, on a jig rod that you already got. But the main takeaway here would be pay attention to what are the bass around me eating. And that's what you want to consider when making your selection as far as what soft bait should I buy. Just Pretty much just match the hatch and keep it simple. Um, moving on, we're going into the summer now. So talking post spawn, water temps rising, bass getting more active. For that reason, the wedge tails are gonna kind of take a back seat. We still throw them a, a bit. I throw the wedge tail baits at night in the summer primarily and I, and I have good luck on them. But other than that, the paddle tails are gonna tend to take over during this time of year. Um, why? Because since the bass are more active, that paddle tail, you can get it thumping, kicking more water, and you'll get a reactive strike out of those bass. Um, so fishing these baits, a lot of ways to fish a paddle tail bait. You can go out there, cast and crank, just real simple. Throw it out there, retrieve it back to you, and it's going to get you bit. Another great way to fish this bait that I don't hear talked about all too much is fishing it almost similar to a jig. I have a lot of luck just going out there throwing a paddle tail out, let it hit the bottom, give it a couple pops, not real aggressive or anything like that, but just on the slow retrieve, just mix in a couple pops and you'll be surprised how well they chew it. Another great way to fish it would be the straight retrieve, but add in some pauses. A lot of times I've got some real good bites just doing the straight retrieve and as soon as I give a little break in that handle turn, bam, they'll hit it. Um, so yeah, play around with the retrieve. Pay attention to that bait as well. Whatever bait that you might have, watch it in the water. See how slow you can get that bait and still have some tail thump. See how fast you can get it without it kind of turning on its side. Because with that water temp going up, depending where you be, where you're at in the country, the activity of the bass is gonna be different. So just see what they're after, mix up that retrieve speed. And I can guarantee you, you're gonna get bit. Um, one other thing to note in the summertime, we're now since we're talking post spawn, if you if you're having trouble getting bit 
on any bait, consider downsizing because these fish have spawned. So your lakes, your ponds, they're filled with all these little fry swimming around, all these small little fish. And that's what the bass are gonna keep, be keyed in on. So if you're having trouble getting bit, consider downsizing. I can guarantee you if you do that and you try the, these different techniques, that's gonna get you some summertime bites. Um, moving on into the fall time of year. Now we're talking the water's starting to cool off a little bit more. These fish, they're still active though. Um, but these fish, they're looking to feed up on winter. So now instead of keying in on those small fry, they're gonna be looking for that bigger bite. Um, so again, just like the springtime and the pre-spawn in the fall, the bigger baits are gonna come back out and so are the wedge tail baits. I still get bit on the paddle tail baits. My PB actually came mid to late October, night fishing, throwing a paddle tail like I talked about. I threw it out there, let it hit bottom, slow retrieve, adding in some uh, some pops off the bottom. And that, that's how my biggest bass came on a paddle tail in the late fall. So they're definitely still gonna get you bites, but that's this time of year, the wedge tail baits, Definitely, um, definitely mix them up. If you're not getting bit on a paddle tail, throw the wedge tail because one of them's gonna get bit. Um, yeah. So as the as the fall continues and the water temp continues to drop, obviously the bath, bass are gonna get more lethargic as that water goes down. So later in the year, now you're talking kind of again like pre-spawn, uh, exclusively wedge tail baits, pretty much from the mid to late or i'd say late fall until pre-spawn that's that's your time where you really gotta be out there grinding with the wedge tail baits and the bigger ones at that um yeah these fish they're real lazy this time of year a big giant fish is not gonna want to expend too much energy to get that meal the, how these fish operate is how can i get the most calories basically the best bang for my buck how can i get the biggest meal without having to move too much and that's why you want to upsize these baits during this time of year because rather than chasing a bunch of little gills or little fry around the banks the big fish are going to opt for that one big meal that's sitting right in front of their face um this time of year just like pre-spawn you want to be fishing these baits real slow um summertime with the paddle tails you get that retrieve speed going up and getting that reactive strike but in the in the cold in the cold months you really really want to slow your tree speed down and when when i say slow i'm talking it, it's going to depend on where you're fishing and all that and how far you're cast in and everything but i would say as a good rule of thumb three to five minute casts if you think you're going slow cut it in half and then cut it in half again and i can guarantee you even if you don't think that oh geez this bait can't be having any action there may be a bass nose down on that bait and all it takes is for your bait to bump into a rock, get that tail moving a tiny little bit and you're gonna get bit. So um, yeah, barely, barely working these baits. Never think that you're working them too slow in the in the winter time or in the cold month. I've got bit completely dead sticking baits. 30 seconds out there, not touching my reel at all. First, first handle turn and I got one on. As far as rigging these soft baits, there's a lot of different hook configurations and ways that you could rig these baits up. I'd have to recommend, especially if you're getting into this stuff, if you can get away with it in your body of water, you're going to want to throw a jig hook style bait, something like this. The reason I say that is because your hook ratio, hook up ratio, it's going to be the best with these exposed hook baits. Um, if you can't get away with that, something a little bit more weedless but still got that exposed hook, that'd be something like a Butch Brown rig here. Um, we tie them on the water. All it is is monofilament, 25 pound monofilament, two clinch knots from the eye to the line tie. And um, that bait manages to be a little bit more weedless because the hook sits a little bit closer to the bait, but it's still an exposed hook. It's still on top. And when the fish hits it, you're going to get those two hook shanks in its mouth and you'll have no problem hooking up on those fish. If you can't get away with the jig hook and you can't get away with the, with the uh, Butch Brown rig and you got maybe more grassy lakes or you got a lot of weeds where you're fishing, 
Um, then you're going to need to go with maybe something like a line through bait. Um, good option here would be maybe something like a burrito shad. Uh, there's, if you can see, hook pocket there, hook pocket there, and then one shank of the treble sits on top. Um, close to the bait, just one tiny little hook point, and it manages to be a lot more weedless than something like a jig hook Huddleston. Um, another great line through option, something like this. This is a Defiant. Started throwing this bait this year. Appears like a jig hook bait. That slides right out, and it's a line through. Goes straight through the nose. Um, this bait's awesome. The hook sits real close to the body, and that allows this bait to be real weedless. I've had success dragging this thing through pretty thick grass, kind of popping it out. And uh, it's done well for me. But if you tried those line throughs and it's still not working, you're still getting a lot of weeds, then that's going to leave you with a weedless alternative. Um, as far as weedless goes, a uh, good one here. Again, Huddleston 68. That's a great weedless bait. Um, or the Real Prey Chattel Tail. Another great weedless bait. Beauty in these is that hook. It's in there good, it's protected. You're not gonna get any weeds, but the baits are soft enough to where when a fish comes up behind it and it eats that bait, that, that rubber is soft, it's gonna go down, and you'll have no problem jacking that hook through that fish's mouth and landing it every time.